then in terms of your own vocation, when did you realize that you wanted to be a priest? Uh, I grew up thinking that I would become a doctor. No. And even as a, as a boy, I think I was 13 years old at the time, I, I, I was already reading medical books to prepare myself for uh, entry into a medical school. But then I uh, was asked to join a parish youth group, and uh, it was made up of the sons of the members of the Knights of Columbus, and my father was a member of that. So we were forced to <laughs> join that group. We were the junior Knights of Columbus. I didn't want to join it, but uh, the members elected me president, so I was forced to, uh, <laughs> to be present all the time. I, I got involved in the parish, the youth program, and the other programs of the parish. But more importantly, uh, I became a friend of the young priest who served as spiritual director of the group. And uh, yeah, without my knowing it, I think I was getting influenced by the, the work in the parish and by this priest. But no explicit, nothing explicitated about vocation. It was still medical school. Then this priest was given his own parish and the new priest came along and he learned about it. So my intention to enter medical school. So he, he was able to convince me to take an exam, uh, an entrance examination to a Jesuit university. And he said, you can take your pre-medical course there. You can even take the exam for a scholarship. You know? And every young person wanted to enter that Jesuit university. But uh, yeah, if you come from an ordinary family, you could not afford it. Yeah. So I said, yes. The first exam, you know, that was Friday evening. You know, I saw I said, the name, of course, and then type of vocation. So I went to the proctor. I said, Father, what do I put here? He said, priesthood. I said, why priesthood? I said, this is an entrance exam to the seminary. So that's the story of my vocation. That was the I beginning. Was, yeah, that was the beginning. I was fooled into uh, entering the seminary. But I, I, I failed the exam. It was very clear in the exam that I did not want to uh, uh, I didn't have any idea about uh, priesthood, uh, but the university accepted me. Okay. Uh, the seminarians attended university, so I could still pursue my medical uh, career in the same university. But on that score, the priest who fooled me succeeded, <laughs> as I got confused. You know, I said I had to do some soul searching. Uh, do I really want to become? a doctor. And then when I learned that I could not enter the seminary, I felt disappointed. So I said, why am I disappointed? You thought, I don't uh, want I this. Don't want to. <laughs> so why, why, why is it causing this negative reaction that I tried to persuade the rector of the seminary to give me uh, an, another exam <laughs> to test me again, but he refused. But on the day I had to pay my reservation for the university, the priest who uh, administered the exam saw me and said, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'll enter the university. And he said, you are stubborn. We already told you that you could not enter the seminary, but you were insisting. I said, well, because I did not know it was an exam for the seminary. Then he interviewed me a bit. He called the rector, and they just accepted me. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and of that group, the, the first year philosophy students, seminarians that I belonged to, I was the only one who was ordained on time. So you got better at the exams as the, as the years <laughs> went on, obviously, Cardinal. So really, for me, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a calling. It's a, it's not my desire. It was uh, some people had to, in a way, push me into it. You know, and here I am. Here you are. <laughs> I want you to